What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another video. Hope you're doing well, feeling great, and enjoying freedom. It's a great day to have a great day. Today, I wanted to talk about how to be your own bank in 2022 with silver, gold, cash, and some bonuses. We're going to get into it, but really quick, just in case you're new, make sure to subscribe for daily videos, subscribe to my second channel for weekly videos, get yourself some DYDSS merchandise to help support the channel, come and join us in the Precious Metals VIP Club for giveaways, I have one going on right now, join before March 1st to automatically get entered, live streams, deal alerts, you can watch tomorrow's video early and commercial free right now if you want to, and this morning I just posted a brand new adventure vlog and a whole lot more. And of course, last but not least, go and get your two free stocks by downloading Weeble and funding your account. Everything will be linked in the description. So today is Saturday, February 26th, 2022. Believe it or not, I'm filming the video on Thursday the 24th, which means I have no idea what the spot price is going to be by the time the video drops. So head on down to the comments and let me know the date and time you're viewing the video and what the current spot price is for you. I'm always curious. So in this video, I wanted to do an update on the be your own bank concept. This is probably one of the more popular video topics on my channel. It's something that I thoroughly enjoy talking about it. It's one of the most fun topics in the whole silver and gold stacking world that I like to talk about. I find it fun. I find it interesting. A lot of people do as well. Haven't done a video like this since last year, so I figured I'd do an update. How to be your own bank in 2022. But before we can get into how to be your own bank, we should probably talk about why you should consider being your own bank and taking matters into your own hands and protecting yourself financially. So first things first. When it comes to the short term and when it comes to the long term, there are a couple of different issues that we may end up facing. Some of those issues we are almost guaranteed to end up facing. In the short term, this could really be anything. And this is something that's going to happen on a micro level, aka something that could happen to really just you, your family, like your own personal financial hardships maybe something along the lines of getting laid off of work or or this is going wrong or maybe you get into a, a car accident and now you have to pay for car repairs or god forbid have to pay for a whole new car maybe this went on maybe that went on little things pop up because at the end of the day that's life that's just what happens we're going about our day we're minding our own business and boom okay now we got to replace a window or now we got to fix the roof or now we got to take care of this or we got to pay for this and unexpected expenses it could be a medical bill maybe get an injury maybe you get sick maybe you got to take care of that this is what i'm talking about when it comes to the short term so the short term way of combating financial hardships is to be stacking currency dollar bills or whatever currency it is that you go by in whatever country it is that you live in. Stacking a little bit of cash, stacking some fiat. Stack, stacking those Federal Reserve notes, the backed by debt notes. Now, I'm personally not the biggest fan of currency. I, to be honest with you, I hate the idea of holding on to currency. I want to put my dollars to work as much as I can. And the reason for that is because I don't have a whole lot of dollar bills to put to work in the first place. So I should probably maximize my method of putting my currency to work for me. But it's important to have a little bit of cash set aside as a short-term emergency fund. Now, this is something that you have to calculate on your own. People ask all the time, oh, how much cash should I, should I have set aside? Give me a dollar amount that I can save up for. It varies person to person, household to household, because we're all financially prepping for different numbers of people, different bills. You know, there's one person over here who might be financially preparing himself. Maybe he lives by himself in a one bedroom apartment. Meanwhile, that guy over there is financially prepping for himself, his wife, his three kids in a nice big house. That guy's expenses are probably larger than the guy in the one bedroom apartment. 
So what you have to do is figure out what your monthly expenses are, the necessary monthly expenses. I'm not talking about your movie theater budget. I'm talking about the necessary expenses. How much currency does it take to keep a roof over your head? How much currency does it take to put food on the table? How much currency does it take to take care of your other bills, your car, gassing up the car, paying for insurance, your phone bill, all that stuff? How much currency does it take to take care of all of those expenses? Once you figure out that number, you should probably multiply it by at least three. Everyone always says have a one to three month emergency fund. I would say have a three to six month emergency fund. And if you want to rewind two years, as it turns out, some of us probably would have been a whole lot better off with a 24 month emergency fund. But that's a little bit excessive. I say anywhere between three and six months is pretty rock solid. That should probably be more than enough. And if you want to stack up more currency than that, have at it. But once again, cash just sitting there getting nothing done and not doing any work for you. To me, sounds like it has more cons than pros, but that's just my opinion. Moving away from the short term, I think we should now talk about the long term. What about the long term financial issues that we should be preparing for? Something on the macro level. Something that isn't just going to happen to me and my personal life or my household. What's something that is likely to affect each and every one of us? In fact, what's something that's currently affecting each and every one of us? Inflation. This is the long term that many of us are preparing for in the silver and gold stacking world. Many of us use silver and gold as a method of combating inflation to the best of our ability, just as simply a way to store value. I don't think anybody out there, at least not anybody with the long-term vision, not anybody who actually understands the precious metals, is stacking the precious metals trying to get rich. I don't think that's what the goal is for 99 percent of people who are stacking out there, if they wanted to get rich, they would probably be investing in businesses, stocks, and real estate. Those are ways of creating wealth, generating wealth, and building wealth. Silver and gold, just simply a way of preserving wealth, preserving what you have, saving what you have, and protecting what you have. So away from the currency, since inflation is going to eat this stuff alive. The purchasing power has done absolutely nothing but go down. The, the, the purchasing power, this has taken so much punishment. How much can a $100 bill get you? Ask somebody that's 20 years older than you. What were they able to get at the grocery store for $100 a couple decades back? They're probably going to tell you a whole lot more than you're able to get today. So the purchasing power of these going down. So my way of protecting myself from that right there, since that's the, that's the long-term issue, is with what I consider to be the closest thing we have to a long-term solution to that long-term problem, such as silver and gold. Now, I like the silver and gold, and I like stacking it in a way that's way more heavy on silver. My personal gold to silver ratio to be honest with you, doesn't even make sense to me. I'm very weak when it comes to gold. The amount of silver that I have in comparison to the amount of gold that I have, in my opinion, doesn't make sense. So I'm hoping for the opportunity to begin focusing a little bit more of my attention on gold, just to make things a little bit more even. But at the end of the day, both precious metals are fantastic. And the way I see it is that if you're stacking both silver and gold, Sure, you can go 50-50, you can go 75-25, you can go 99-1 if that's what you want to do. But if you're focusing on both precious metals, the way I see it is that if you're stacking both, each of their pros kind of cancel out the other one's cons. I think if you're stacking silver, the benefits of silver kind of make up for what gold lacks, and vice versa. If you're stacking gold, it makes up for what silver lacks. So if you're stacking both at the same time simultaneously, 
in my opinion, I think that's the best way you can go. And we're going to get back into stacking silver and gold momentarily, but I wanted to also mention that you can go beyond silver and gold. You can go on to other precious metals as well. You can go on to rhodium, palladium, if that's what you want to do. I don't have any of those metals. You can go on to platinum if, if you want. I only have this little piece of platinum. This was sent in as a gift. I don't stack platinum, but I do think this is awesome. Point being is that you can stack other precious metals as well. There is nothing wrong with diversification. And while we're on the subject of diversification, before we get back into the silver and gold and how to be your own bank with different increments and whatnot, I wanted to show one other thing that I stack. Little bit of copper. Now I don't pay attention to copper. I don't focus really any attention at all, like whatsoever on copper. I don't convert my dollars into copper. I've only done that two potentially three times, but that was just for fun. I stack copper for free. Now, you can stack copper in a couple of different ways. You can go after copper rounds and bars. You can go after bullet-shaped pieces of copper. You can pick up some scrap copper if you are a plumber or an electrician, or if you know anybody that's a plumber or an electrician easy way of getting some free copper. But my favorite way of getting free copper is by simply stacking pre-1982 pennies. Before 1982, each penny was 95% copper. And in 1982, if you find any 1982 pennies, you pretty much have a 50-50 chance on whether it's copper or not. You'd have to weigh it to be sure. But pre-82, 95% copper. And I can never remember the exact weight off the top of my head. I, I think it takes nine copper pennies to equate to an ounce of copper. Now remember that's an ounce of copper because that's an industrial metal, not a precious metal. There's a difference between ounces and troy ounces. But that's one thing that I do to diversify a little bit. Again, I don't spend any time at all focusing on copper. If I stumble upon it for free, I hang on to it. So you can stack copper just by looking through your pocket change. That's how I ended up with a huge bag of copper pennies over the years. Now I understand copper is, for some strange reason, considered controversial in the stacking world. Any time in the past over the last four plus years that I've even vaguely mentioned copper, I, I get people jumping down my throat being like, how dare you stack copper? Copper's horrible, terrible, evil thing because it's not silver. <laughs> and my response has always been, stands a better chance than the dollar bill. And anytime I've said that, they turn around and they're like, eh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> so that's an easy way of stacking copper for free. But now back to the silver and gold. When it comes to being your own bank, we understand why many of us choose to be our own bank. But how do we go about being our own bank? Yeah, the short answer is yeah, stack silver and gold. Okay, but what's a more detailed or a more descriptive explanation when it comes to how to stack silver and gold if we're focusing on being our own bank? I would say the best way to go about doing it is to stack different denominations, different sizes of pieces of silver and pieces of gold. For example, you can see on screen right here, got a little bit of everything. We got a 10 ounce silver bar underneath that gold over there. We have a five ounce piece of silver right here. We have a couple one ounce pieces of silver. We have some two ounce pieces of silver. And right there in the dead center, we have some junk 90% constitutional silver. And those are silver dimes, which means they're about 1 14th of a troy ounce of silver. The reason I say stack different denominations, stack silver of different increments, is the same reason we have different denominations when it comes to currency as well. Sure, you can stack a whole bunch of $100 bills if that's what you want to do. But what happens if you need to make a purchase or what happens if you need to do something? 
where you're unable to get change. A time where it would make more sense to have a couple of uh, ones and fives in your pocket rather than walking around with a $100 bill. That's why it's important to stack a little bit of everything. You want to have the hundreds. You want to have the fifties. You want to have the twenties. I don't have any tens on hand, but you want to have some tens. You want to have the fives, and I don't have any singles on me either, but you want to have some singles too. You want to have all the different denominations. So when it comes to silver and when it comes to gold, same thing applies. For example, some 10 ounce silver bars, like I have right here. You want some 10 ounce silver bars, but what else do you want? Maybe you want some five ounce silver bars as well. Maybe you want some one ounce silver bars. I would say one ounce silver bars are probably, the they're definitely the most popular and I would say they're probably the most convenient. A lot of people like to stack larger denominations. They like to stack silver kilo bars, which that, that, that's over 30 troy ounces of silver. They like to stack 25 ounce silver bars, 50 ounce silver bars, 100 ounce silver bars. And that's fantastic. That's an excellent way of breaking down the premiums to the best of your ability. But my only issue with the larger denominations is that to me, in my opinion, they don't really seem very practical. I like to have slightly smaller denominations in between small increments and medium increments, and I've always found that the 10 ounce silver bars are probably the sweet spot, if that makes sense. You can start to break down the premiums by stacking 10 ounce silver bars. That's when you start to notice, like, okay, yeah, now I understand why people stack 10 ounce silver bars, because stacking a 10 ounce silver bar, financially, typically makes a whole lot more sense than to stack 10 one ounce silver bars. It's like, Wholesale versus retail prices. The larger the denomination, the smaller the premium typically is. That's why people go for the 50 and the 100 ounce silver bars. They can get it as, as close to spot as possible. But I consider 10 ounce bars to be a whole lot more practical. I personally would rather have 10 10 ounce silver bars than one 100 ounce silver bar. That's just personal preference at the end of the day. Like I said, nothing wrong with diversifying, nothing wrong with stacking a little bit of everything. But I consider them to be the sweet spot because you can start breaking down the premiums, but at the same time, they're a relatively small denomination. And if you wanna to go to even smaller denominations, you can absolutely go with the five ounce silver bars or the one ounce silver bars or coins or rounds. If you wanna go even smaller than that, and this is where things get interesting as well, you can go for the junk constitutional 90% silver. Like I said before, those are about 1 14th of a troy ounce of silver. If you need to break a troy ounce, if you need to make change for a troy ounce, that's where the junk silver has you covered. 1 14th of a troy ounce of silver. If you need Half a troy ounce of silver, just grab seven of those little silver dimes. That's half a troy ounce of silver. Some other denominations, silver quarter, about one-sixth of a troy ounce of silver. Just grab six of them. That's a troy ounce of silver. Need half a troy ounce? Grab three. And then, of course, there are the half dollars. One-third of a troy ounce of silver. These right here, I would say, are probably becoming my favorite denomination. I like the one-third of a troy ounce, although I really like the one-fourteenth of a troy ounce. So when it comes to junk silver, once again, it's all personal preference, but it's a way of making change, or it's a way of breaking a troy ounce. See, a lot of people, they forget or they lose sight of what we might end up seeing in the future. Depending on how bad inflation gets, depending on what the general state of the economy is going to be long term, people are very, very focused on today. They look at their computer screen, they see what spot price is right now, and that's all they know. But we have to take into account, what if spot price goes up by quite a bit? What happens if the spot price goes from 25-ish dollars an ounce back up to 50 dollars an ounce? 
Now all of a sudden, each individual piece of silver is worth, quote unquote, worth twice as many dollar bills as it was at 25. But what if it goes beyond that? What if it goes over $50? What if it goes to 100? What if it goes to 500? I'm just using made up numbers right now. We haven't seen those prices, but let's just say we do. It might be kind of tough to get rid of a kilo bar or a 50 ounce bar. It might even be tough to get rid of a 10 ounce bar. Who knows? Which is why the smaller denominations make perfect sense to me in my opinion. And being that they're not pure silver, you can get them for pretty fair premiums nowadays. So that's where these would come in handy. Same thing applies if we were to talk about gold, by the way. You can see over there in the corner, we have some 10th ounce gold coins and we have a quarter ounce gold coin. I personally don't have gold in any denomination above a quarter ounce. Now, I'm not close-minded to a half ounce gold coin. I'd be okay with a half ounce gold coin. I don't even hate the idea of a one troy ounce gold coin. I would like to get a gold buffalo one day. And I'd probably like to get a couple of other one ounce gold coins as well. But I don't think I would want to have a majority of my gold in the one troy ounce denomination. For similar reasons, as we said before, when it comes to silver of larger denominations. Can you get rid of it if you need to? Sure, absolutely. But it's easier to part ways with smaller denominations. So that's why I think the sweet spot when it comes to gold is probably quarter ounce and, and, and half ounce. So, see, for a full troy ounce right now, spot price of gold is, as I'm filming the video, over 1900 bucks. You got to tack on a little bit of a premium. That brings it up to probably a little bit more than $2,000. I don't know if I like the idea of packing $2,000 into just one piece of gold. Mainly because if I ever need a little bit of cash, let's just say I need $1,000 or $500. Sure, I have the silver, which can help me take care of that. But if I'm just working with gold, I'd have to part ways with the whole thing. Just $2,000 just so I can take 500 of those dollars and do whatever it is that I need to do? I'd rather have smaller denominations. I'd, I'd rather have smaller increments. That way, if push comes to shove and I need, let's just say, $500, rather than getting rid of a whole troy ounce of gold, I could just get rid of one of these quarter ounce, which is worth about $500 right now. All you have to do is be strategic. All you have to figure out is what makes the most sense for you in your situation because it varies person to person, household to household. It varies how much cash you need to have in savings as an emergency fund. It varies which metal is your precious metal of choice. There are a lot of people out there who couldn't care less about silver. They're all in on gold. There are people out there who couldn't care less about gold. They're all in on silver. There are a lot of people out there who are pretty much 50-50. There, there are people out there who say for every thousand dollars they put into silver, they put a thousand dollars into gold as well. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with going 50-50. In my opinion, I think going 50-50 right now is leaning way too heavy on gold. I would rather go probably closer to 90-10, leaning far more in the direction of silver right now, and utilizing gold as a tool to diversify, because they're different metals for different reasons. It's not like they're the same thing of a different color. No, they're completely different metals for completely different reasons. They have different industrial uses, different purposes, different values, different melting points. They're different metals for different reasons. And again, if you're stacking both, I think it's kind of like getting the best of both worlds. But at this point in time, for me personally, again, it varies person to person, but for me, it makes more sense to focus way more of my attention on silver than gold at this point. 
For you, it might be the exact opposite. Or for you, it might be similar, but not exactly the same. It varies person to person. So that's something that you have to figure out for yourself. How much cash do you need? How, mu how many dollar bills would you need to stack up to take care of, let's just say, one to three or three to six months worth of expenses? How many people are you financially preparing for? How much silver do you need? How much gold do you need? Are you going 50-50? Are you going 25-75? Are you going 90-10? Are you going all in on one and completely neglecting the other? Do you want to focus any time, energy, or effort on other metals such as rhodium, platinum, palladium, or even an industrial metal like copper? That's 100% up to you. In my opinion, I think the best thing anybody could possibly do is diversify. Figure out what makes the most sense. Put most of your energy into that right there. But take a small piece of your energy and focus on diversifying. Especially on the metals that you don't really feel the need to stack. See, right now I don't feel that much of a need to be stacking gold. But I still focus a little bit of my attention on gold because I understand the importance of diversification. You don't want to have all your eggs in one basket. You want to be diversified. It's, it's the best way to stay safe. And in my opinion, it's the best way to be your own bank. So I want you guys to head on down to the comments and let me know anything and everything related to today's video topic. When it comes to cash, what do you think the best amount of cash is for an emergency fund? Not, a, not an amount of cash. I'm talking about you think it's one month, one to three months, three to six months, six to 12 months. What do you think is ideal when it comes to a cash position? Then, of course, when it comes to silver and gold, between the two metals, which is your precious metal of choice? And what would you say your ratio is or, or how much? You're focusing on one metal versus the other. 50-50, 90-10, maybe you couldn't care less about one metal and you're all in on the other. When it comes to other metals, miscellaneous metals, platinum, palladium, rhodium, are you stacking any of those? I personally am not, and I don't believe I can see myself starting to stack platinum, palladium, or rhodium anytime in the future, but who knows? And then, of course, last but not least... Copper. What are your thoughts on that? Head on down to the comments and let me know. If you guys liked today's video, please hit that like button. Subscribe if you're new. Subscribe to my second channel for weekly videos. Go and get yourself some DYDSS merchandise to help support the channel in the biggest possible way. We have t-shirts, hoodies, stickers, and coffee mugs in a bunch of different designs. We even have the limited edition Luck Has Nothing To Do With It t-shirt and hoodie only available until St. Patrick's Day, so get one while you can. A portion of the proceeds are going to St. Baldrick's Foundation. DYDSS store will be linked in the description. Come and join us in the Precious Metals VIP Club, which is where I do giveaways every single month. I have one going on right now, and it ends on March 1st. Join before then to get entered. Live streams multiple times a week, deal alerts on silver and gold every single day. You can watch all of my videos early and commercial free. You can watch tomorrow's video early and commercial free right now if you want to. And this morning I just posted a brand new adventure vlog and there are a ton of other perks as well. VIP club link in the description. And of course, last but not least, Go and get your two free stocks by downloading Weeble and funding your account. They'll give you two free random stocks just for doing so. If you refer one friend before the end of the month, you only have a couple of days left, they will give you a spin on the Weeble wheel where you are given a chance to win a free share of Google, which is worth over $2,000. And if you refer three friends before the end of the month, only a couple of days left, they will give you a guaranteed $150 worth of Apple stock for free. If you don't want the stocks, go and get them anyway. Sell them. Congratulations. Now you have some cash to go and get some silver and gold if you want. Only a couple days left. 
We will link in the description. Time is running out. Don't pass up on an opportunity. And of course, last but not least, I want you guys to head on down in the comments and let me know anything and everything related to today's video topic. When it comes to being your own bank, is that how you see it first and foremost? If you're stacking the silver, if you're stacking the gold, if you're into wealth preservation and precious metals, do you consider yourself your own bank? Banking on your terms, not Bank of America or Wells Fargo's terms, your own terms. Of course, when it comes to cash, what do you think the best idea is for an emergency fund? When it comes to silver and gold, which is your preference between the two metals? Are you focusing on any other metals? whether they be precious metals like platinum, palladium, or rhodium, maybe some industrial metals like copper. Head on down to the comments and let me know anything and everything related to today's video topic. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you tomorrow. Don't you dare stop smiling. Peace.